Hey everybody, I'm Drew from NWA3D and we're going to go over how to install the NWA3D A5 in Kira 4. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do after you upgrade or if you've already clicked through the default printer options and you didn't actually choose the A5, is we want to pick the A5 from the non-networked printer list. So to do that, we'll click on the name of whatever printer you have right here in the printer name, and then we'll click Add Printer. Now when we click Add Printer, we'll see this list with Add a Network Printer and Add a Non-Network Printer. And we'll want to scroll down on the Add a Non-Network Printer list until we get to the NWA 3D LLC, and then you'll see right there, the NWA 3D A5. We'll go ahead and change the name if you'd like, or you can keep it the default name and click Add. Once the A5 is loaded, you'll see this box right here for the size of your printer. Now you can scroll in and out by using the scroll wheel, or you can hold the right mouse button and actually rotate your view as well. You can also use the controls down here to change the different views. I like to use the right mouse button. Now we're ready to load our model in. So once we get our .stl file downloaded from a program, we're going to bring that 3D file into Cura by clicking open right here. You can also put your SD card in your computer and then go to the STL files and download one of these, which is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull in the snap housing. When I click open, the print will come into our print area and you'll see that it's yellow. If your print is yellow, that means that it's 3D printable. If you click on your print, you can actually drag your print around to where you'd like it to print. If you want it to print in the front, you can put your print in the front. If you want to print it in the back, you can put it in the back. Now if you're ready to slice your model, the only thing that you'd have to do is click slice right here. Then your model is going to be sliced. But there's a couple things we want to check on first. To start, we want to make sure that our model is exactly where we want it to be. So we want to try to get it close to the middle. You can also load as many models as you like into the build area, but I'm just going to stick with one today. Now over here on the left, you can see there's different controls. This one right here is scale underneath move which is the default setting. When we click scale, you can click and hold on these boxes and you can scale something really big. But if you scale it outside of your build area, it's gonna put these gray and yellow lines through it. That means it's too large to be able to print. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset, but you could also change something maybe to this 100% to 150 to change something to be larger or smaller than your print itself. But I'll just stick with 100 for now. The last thing I want to show you is rotate. When we click rotate, we want to make sure that our model is oriented correctly for 3D printing. If I hold my right mouse button and move this around, you'll see that this box is actually hollow inside. And if I print it like this, it's going to create supports inside of it. And I can show you what those supports look like by clicking slice and then looking at the preview. When you click slice, it's going to actually tell you how long it's going to print and what it's going to look like by either clicking preview right here or preview up here at the top. When I click preview, it will actually show you inside of here are all the supports. And I can move this slider up and down and I can see if I zoom in the support structures that are going to be created. And I don't want those. So I want to rotate my model by clicking and dragging on these circles. Now each circle corresponds with a different direction. So I want to go ahead and rotate it with the red circle right here, 90 degrees. And if I click and rotate it, when I go to rotate my model, it will actually turn gray because I'm inside the preview area. So if I've changed the setting in the preview area, I'm not going to be able to see my model again until I re-slice. I can also go back to prepare and see my model there. One thing you want to ensure is that your model is always flat on the build plate. If you hold your right mouse button and look and see that it's in the air, you want to make sure that it goes and snap to the plate itself. So I can go to move here and make sure my Z is zero. And press return, and now it's flat on the build plate. We can see the inside of our box here where we can click slice and then look at the preview to see if it needs to print with supports. 
Now if I look at the preview, you can see that no supports are needed because the flattest side is on the bottom. Now if I'm ready to print, all I would have to do is click Save to Removable Drive. It'll save it to our SD card if our SD card is in our computer, and then we can say Eject and put that in the printer. You can also click Save to File and save it somewhere on your computer. This is also an option if your SD card isn't in your computer and you can save it in a folder to drag onto your SD card later. The last thing I'm going to show you are the quality settings. Up here on the right, there are different types of qualities. There are tons of awesome settings behind the recommended area, but in the custom area, you can see all these different things that we can change. But we're just going to stick in this regular area right here, which are the recommended print settings. The layer height is the first thing. 0 0.08 is the best quality possible. If I move this to 0 0.08, it's going to print at a high quality, but it's going to take longer to slice. If I slice this model, you can see that this is now going to take 3 hours and 22 minutes. Now if I move this over here to 0.24, that's the fast quality. So it's going to print quicker because the layer lines are going to be thicker, but it's not going to look as good because each one of those layers makes the model look better when they're closer together. So even though here it's going to print in 49 minutes, you can see it's not going to have as many layers and it's not going to look as nice. This infill setting is literally what's filled inside of your model. If you want this setting to be stronger, your model will be stronger because it will have more infill inside of it. So if you increase it, your model will be stronger. If I move this to an, a 60% infill, for instance, it's going to make my model stronger, but it's going to take longer to print. So if I reslice my model, I'll see that it's going to take 49 minutes still because this has really thin walls. If my model was bigger, it would make a bigger difference. But in the case of this one, it doesn't have very much infill inside of this model. So sometimes it might change your model, and sometimes it won't. The last thing is the support. The support is automatically checked to where if it ever needs it, then it will create support structures. But your model might not need support, and if you want to turn it off, you can just uncheck this box. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to change other settings, you can click this custom right here, and you can change tons of things inside and under the hood of Cura. We've optimized these settings for the fast quality, the normal quality, and the best quality, but if you want to change one of these values, feel free to experiment. Because if you change one of these, like a bottom layer to 8, you can always click back up here and go back to our different qualities, and it will ask you, hey, you've changed something. Do you want to keep it, or do you want to discard it? So if you keep the settings, it won't override any of your profiles, but it will keep them when you move to the next one. Or you can create a new pro profile with your desired settings. I'm going to go ahead and say discard, so it just gets rid of them. That's a great way to make sure that you reset your values to different things. But if you want, you can click this recommended right here, and you can stay in this recommended print settings the entire time. I'm going to go ahead and print my model at regular quality, 0.16, and hit slice. Now when my model sliced, it's going to take an hour and 19 minutes. I can click save to removable drive to save it directly to my model, and then I can hit eject to eject it. I can even change the name of my model by clicking over here and typing whatever I want. So maybe I want to call this snap housing number two, because I already saved one of them on there. Now I can go ahead and say save to removable drive, and it will save it as snap housing number two. Now when I select it on my printer, I can select that and print from SD to pick snap housing number two, and that will be my model. Go ahead, go ahead and hit eject, put that in your printer, and you're ready to go. Now if you ever need help with Cura, you can fill out a support request on our website, nwa3d.com, contact us in the chat, or any other way that you can get a hold of us, because we're here to help. Good luck 3D printing, and let us know if you need anything.